When people have dramatic weight loss, there's often excess skin left behind, and then they need a little help getting the shape that they want. So they call people like Dr. Tamara Mosharafa, a plastic surgeon here in town. Good morning. It's good to see you back here on the show. Good morning, Stephanie. Thanks. Glad to be here. So how common is weight loss surgery after dramatic weight loss? It's actually quite common. Uh, obviously, obesity is a huge problem in America, and uh, one in three Americans actually is clinically obese. Um, so these, these operations, these bariatric procedures to help uh, lose weight are becoming much more common. So what would you say? How many people out of the people who actually undergo uh, surgery have really had that dramatic weight loss? Um, well, the success rate is about 75 percent. And then what's interesting is of those people who have massive weight loss, which, is, which can be 100 pounds or more, mm -hmm. about a third of those patients will go on to have at least one, if not multiple, procedures to address the excess skin in certain areas of the body. So what do you typically, what areas of the body do you typically address? It's really from head to toe. Um, we address the face and neck, uh, the breasts. Um, oh, actually, here we have a, a before and after picture. So uh, one of the things about um, the face and neck lift in a, in a weight loss patient is that we tend to focus a little bit more on the neck. They often get that uh, sort of loss of definition in the lower part of the neck, that uh, sort of turkey waddle, as they sometimes yeah. call it. Um, and so we focus on trying to restore that contour and improve that. Um, we also do procedures for the breasts. We do lifts and, and frequently augmentations. Most of the time, these patients need not just a lift, but also some volume added because they've lost a lot of volume with their weight loss. Um, we also do abdominal procedures. Uh, tummy tucks are very common. And there's a before and after of a, of a patient who had just a, a tummy tuck uh, just in the front to remove all that extra skin after her weight loss. Uh, a slightly more aggressive procedure is uh, a circumferential um, lift or a body lift, or some people call that a belt lipectomy. And here you see a profile picture of a patient um, who had, sort of, you can see how the scar goes all the way around. So it addresses not only the front, but also the, the posterior side and even the lateral thigh to some extent. Um, and then uh, arms. Uh, the brachioplasty or dressing the extra skin of the arms and here's a patient before and after um, uh, showing the removal of that extra uh, wavy skin uh, from the arms. I have patients say that when she stops waving her arms keep going for another 30 seconds. So. <laughs> well, we can relate to that. <laughs> and then uh, and finally the legs and the thigh lift is uh, also a very common procedure and this is a patient who really had a massive weight loss 275 pounds My she goodness. was able to lose and uh, there's a before and after she obviously had some work done on her tummy as well but you can see the legs uh, eliminating that extra skin and giving her a smoother contour there well, and I even asked just before when we were looking at the um, the picture I said did you also perform liposuction on her and and mm -hmm. your response was no yeah liposuction is rarely indicated in these patients because it's really not a fat problem it's purely a skin problem and in fact if you do liposuction you remove more uh, tissue behind the skin may actually get worse. So these are, these are operations where they really need the skin removed. And the, the trade-off for that is that, that they buy scars. And that's one of the things that I spend a lot of time talking with the patients beforehand about, mm -hmm. that um, while we certainly can improve the contour here, these operations do require scarring. These are not minimally invasive procedures like liposuction. These require the removal of tissue. And uh, when you cut a lot of tissue, you end up uh, leaving some scars. But almost all of these patients would be happy to trade that contour well, for Well, sure, scar. after the work of losing you know, more than 100 pounds, in, to be able to be the size that they have worked for I'm sure is huge. That's right. You talked about them not being minimally invasive. So do you, even considering that, can you combine certain procedures at the same time? You can, yes. And, and again, uh, we've talked a little bit about this before, that you want to limit the operative time so that you minimize the anesthetic risk. So we try to keep that operative time down to, uh, down to six hours or less. And then I also try to combine the surgeries in such a way that the recovery sort of goes together. So we may do the breasts and the arms together, for example, or do the tummy and the thighs together. So you keep it somewhat regional so that they just don't hurt from head to toe right. after the surgery. And then uh, what is the best time in that weight loss process to get this type of um, surgery? Performed? Great question. And uh, there are actually criteria for that. And, and what we typically look for is we look for that it's been at least a year since their weight loss surgery. So if they've had a uh, lap band procedure or gastric bypass procedure, we want to make sure that it's at least 12 months after that procedure before we do any of these. And the second criteria is at least six months of a stable weight. So we don't want to see any major fluctuations in their weight over the previous six months so that we know that they're stable. And lastly, depending on the procedure, what would be the average of recovery time? Because you talked about them not wanting to be in head from, uh, pain from head to toe. That's right. So. And, and it really varies uh, by procedure. The, the, uh, the, face, the face and uh, arms and breasts typically is about two weeks. Mm -hmm. The tummy and thighs tend to be a little bit longer, more like four to six weeks of recovery time. Okay. But again, 
you've worked very hard for something, the only thing that you have left of the kind of the previous life is the excess skin. So it's a new lease on life. That's right. With the exchange of, of a scar, which you say most of your clients are, are gladly That's right. <laughs> willing these, to undergo. These are great patients. They're very motivated. Obviously, they've, they've done an enormous amount of work on their own to accomplish this change. And it's really nice to be a part of the sort of the finishing touches. Well, thanks for showing us those dramatic pictures. Oh, you're welcome. And My that's pleasure. It's incredible what you do. Um, let me tell you about this, too. In February and March, anyone who has made a contribution to Haitian relief funds will receive a free consultation from doc Dr. Mosharafa and a beauty gift. And it's a very good one, too, we should tell you. Dr. Tamara Mosharafa's office is at 3301 North 2nd Street in Phoenix, and you can reach them by calling the number right there on your screen at 602 230-1464, 602-230-1464. Check them out online at experiencethebestofyou.com. And lastly, Dr. Tamara Mosharafa is a sponsor of Sonoran Living Live. Whether you want those heightened and well-formed cheekbones like you used to have when you were younger, or you never really had those well-defined cheekbones, today you can have fuller cheeks and a beautiful face with an injection of something called Radiates. Dr. Tamara Mosharafa, a plastic surgeon, is here to show us how the procedure works along with one of his patients, Leslie. We welcome both of you to the show. Thanks, Stephanie. Glad to be here. So let's talk about what types of, of soft tissue fillers are out there. Yeah, there, there are a number of different fillers um, that are available. Uh, the industry kind of started with collagen, and that was one of the first and most popular. Um, and now we have different materials that are used to produce soft tissue fillers, uh, derivatives of something called hyaluronic acid, which is a natural substance in your body. Uh, those are things like Restylin and Perlane. Um, we have calcium-based products, of which Radius is one. Uh, there are polylactic acid derivatives, uh, things um, like Sculptra, mm -hmm. and and then a more permanent filler, which is, um, comes from a derivative of methyl methacrylate, which is actually a bone substitute, not a soft tissue substitute. And the most popular of those is called, Artif is called Artifil, and Artifil is a, is a much longer lasting. So many options. Who would have known? Yeah. In yeah, this particular there's... case, though, I want to know where you can inject them. And I know you've just done some injections on your patients. Right, so. exactly. And typically, these injections are done uh, into the dermis or into the skin, the okay. deep layer of the skin, to correct lines and to fix wrinkles and things like that. But uh, as you can see, see here in the video, um, the, this, this product is called Radius, and it is um, uh, useful in a deeper injection. We're injecting this actually right, right down onto the bone, and as you mentioned at the beginning of the segment, um, this allows you to sort of fill out the cheekbones uh, in the office with a very simple procedure that, that's, that doesn't really have much discomfort and uh, doesn't involve surgery to put in a cheek implant or to transfer fat or any of those things. And it really is quite effective. And we're going to see we've uh, injected just one side here um, on Leslie. And uh, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you the difference uh, before we inject her other side. I promised her I would. We're not going to leave her lopsided. <laughs> um, but you'll get, a, you'll get to see sort of right away this injection that you're seeing on the video was just done about 15 minutes ago. And she's sitting here next to me. We'll show you exactly what, uh, what the, the change is. And as you can see there, what I'm doing is this, it's somewhat malleable. This is like putty in your hands, so to speak. You can inject this. And then after it's injected, you can kind of fine tune it and get just exactly the shape and look that you want. Leslie, as he's pushing on you here, were you feeling any discomfort? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I was pleasantly surprised that this is probably the the most comfortable procedure I've ever had. Really? Yes, okay. it was amazing. That's good to know. That's, that's good to know. Now, um, I know that you did that in her in her cheekbones, but what are some other common locations for the injection? Well, the uh, the, the dermal fillers can be injected in a lot of different areas. Uh, one of the more common areas is these nasolabial folds, or these lines between right the here. nose mm -hmm. uh, and the corner of the mouth, exactly. Um, they can also be injected in into the lines here, uh, what some people call puppet mouth lines or marionette lines, um, something called the pre-jowl sulcus. There's sometimes a little bit of an unusual transition along the jawline that can be corrected there. Okay. Um, uh, so there are a lot of different places where they can be injected. Again, most of them are injected into the dermis, into the, the skin, but as we just saw, they can be injected deeper as well. Well, let's take a close-up look because it's really dramatic. It's very dramatic. And um, I'm going to have you look right straight into that camera right there. And obviously, the her left side of her face. That's correct. Is, we, um, we it's fuller. Mm -hmm. We injected her, her left cheek. And what you can see is, I'll sort of reach across here, but this is the area we injected right along in here. And it does a few things. It fills up the cheek. It also rejuvenates the eye a little bit and takes away some of these fine wrinkles along here that you can see on this side, um, not as much over here. And really kind of gives those high, you know, 
cheekbones that, uh, that really are pretty on just about anybody's face. Well, you can see where she's headed in the direction of looking younger once you complete the other side of her face. Right, right. Um, how long will this last for her? Um, the fillers sort of vary in terms of their longevity. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular product lasts about 9 to 18 months. Okay. So it is one of the longer lasting products. Um, the hyaluronic acid uh, derivatives uh, tend to last a little bit shorter than that, maybe, uh, maybe six months, although there is some data coming out now that suggests that they last even longer than that. And then lastly, what if you want something a little bit more permanent than, uh, you know, the months? Right. And, and that's a bit of a double-edged sword um, because it is to some extent a benefit that these things don't last forever because um, you may not want that volume there forever as the rest of your face ages. So to some extent, that they're, they're, it, again, it's not always a benefit to have it last permanently, but there are options. Uh, fat is one option. Uh, we can harvest and inject your own fat. Mm -hmm. If it's handled and processed properly, then uh, that will, will last uh, and will be permanent. And then as I mentioned before, Artifil is one of the products that's out there that, that lasts for a very long time. If it's not permanent, it lasts for many, many years. Today, Dr. Mosharafa has a special for Sonoran Living viewers. Pay for one year of treatment of Radiess and receive $500 off. That's $500 off of one year's worth of treatment, which is regularly $1,500. Here's how you can get a hold of Dr. Tamar Mosharafa. He's located at 3301 North 2nd Street in Phoenix. You can reach him by calling the number on your screen, 602-230-1464, or visit his website at, at experiencethebestofyou.com. Lastly, Dr. Tamar Mosharafa is a sponsor of Sonoran Living Live.